Hello, my friends. A very good morning to you. A good dawn for you there in Brazil. May God bless you all. And may He enlighten, may the Holy Spirit enlighten your understanding. Because without the light of the Holy Spirit, without His direction, we are not going to be able to understand the Word of God. And the Word of God is vital for our spiritual health and above all for our eternal salvation. So it's necessary that the Holy Spirit will direct the thoughts, our thoughts, so that then we can understand, comprehend, absorb and have the courage and faith to practice His teachings. So we've been speaking about lately concerning the perfect heart towards God, that we have to have a perfect heart towards God. We have to have it, because if we don't, then we will not be saved, no way. Because salvation comes through faith in the Lord Jesus, but faith comes from God Himself, the God of the faith, the Spirit of the faith, who is the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the need of people receiving the Holy Spirit to remain the faith. So, if the Holy Spirit does not give us faith, if He doesn't pass on to us His strength and power for us to understand His voice and word, we will not be saved. But how does it happen? To whom does He give this faith? To whom is He contemplating with faith that saves and delivers and makes us and turns us into children of God? How will God do that? He will choose. Many are called, few are chosen. The few chosen ones are those who are sincere, those who are perfect in heart. But who is perfect in heart, Bishop? Perfect in heart is that person that even though they are immersed in sin, but deep down in their soul, there is a desire, there is a longing for the truth. This is the truth. So, for example, I was idolater, I was a sinner, I was this and that and the other, I was many things. However, through God's compassion, He saw in me a sincerity that nobody would see. No one saw it, because sincerity is something spiritual, is something that is inside our soul, which is our heart. And this sincerity, He gave me a chance and the opportunity to know His Word. And I got to know His Word and I had a sincere heart to apply His Word to my life. And today I'm here. It's been 58 years following and serving my Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, we have something to give to those who also want the same that God has given me. And the secret is sincerity. Sincerity, because the person, you can verify that, that a person, there are people, for example, just as an example, I heard this from a young lady who used to be a prostitute. And she was saying that even though she was having intercourse or sexual intercourse with another person, and in that moment that she was selling her body in order to have her daily bread, she would say deep down in her soul, Oh my God, this is not what I want for my life. You know that I don't want that. Please deliver me from this life. Give me a chance. And the guy was there having pleasure, but she was thinking, my God, I don't want this life. 
So she was in sin, yet within her there was a sincere heart, meaning she was, even though she was in sin, practicing sin, but within her there was a perfect heart. And the perfect heart, everyone can have. Everyone can have it. Only those who don't want it won't have it. But everybody knows what is right and what is wrong. Sometimes the person lives in the wrong because it's the only path that they knew. But they speak to the invisible God the Almighty, and they say, if you exist, please deliver me from this life. This is a perfect heart. Everyone can do that. See what God says. Pay attention to what God says. This is very strong. He says like this, Woe to those, woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel far from the Lord. Woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel far from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who sees us and who knows us? Meaning, a person who is like this is sincere. No, this person is truly fake, pretending a hypocrite because they do not consider the greatness of God in knowing all things, including their thoughts, which means they are offending God. They are mocking God Most High, the Creator. So, to these people, says the Lord, woe to them, woe to them, meaning be careful, they will be punished because of this wicked heart and imperfect and dirt, because they think things that I, the Lord, the Almighty God, they think that I don't know. Jesus also said that. If you read there in Matthew chapter 23, the text starts like this. Then Jesus spoke to the multitude and to his disciples. Look at that. And then it, it comes his speech. And in, in his speech, Jesus repeats seven times, he says to the Pharisees, to the scribes and Pharisees, and he calls them hypocrites. Scribes were those who would copy the Torah, the Bible, the commandments, the prophets. They would copy back then. So they were very much aware of the Word of God, the Scriptures, the commandments. Nobody knew as much as them. Nobody knew as much as them because they would copy the Bible by hand. So they had knowledge of the Word. And Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes. And then he adds, And Pharisees, hypocrites. He calls them here, scribes and Pharisees as hypocrites, they pretend hearts that were imperfect. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. It means this brood of vipers exists today. It's not only with the Jews and the scribes and Pharisees, but these are all those who hide behind a pulpit, a pulpit with the appearance of holy men, with the, the dress of a holy man, a master, 
of religion, but they are criminals, hypocrites. They are imperfects of heart. Jesus said to these people, Woe to you who hide or you try to hide. Look at that. You want to hide deep the counsel far from the Lord. It means inside of them there are personal purposes, there are personal goals and, and will, and they think that they can hide it from the Lord and make the work in the dark. These are those priests, pedophiles, for example. For example, the pedophiles are priests. They are authorities. And the, the parents trust their children, innocent children, to be taken care by these criminals, pedophiles. And they think that they can hide from the Lord. Woe to them. And they say, oh, who can see us? Who knows us? My friend, see that if you read and study the Bible, if you read the Holy Scriptures, you see that there are two types of people, the sincere ones and the hypocrites. The sincere ones are saved, the hypocrites are over. They will not be saved. They will not have faith to be saved. They will not have faith to be saved. That's the problem. The imperfect heart will not have faith to be saved. So when we insist on this, the perfect heart, sincerity, it's to draw the attention of those who are sincere, not the hypocrites, because I don't expect anything from the hypocrites. If God doesn't expect anything from them, let alone me. But I'm sure that amongst us there are those who are immersed in sin and they think like this, oh, there is no more way for me. No, there is. If you are in sin, you who are lost, you who live, it, it doesn't matter the type of sin you committed or you commit. What matters is if you have a very small spark, a small flame of sincerity, God goes and finds this sincerity and He makes this flame then grow in order for you to know His greatness. It's too great. It's too many things. We are going to talk more about this, concerning this tomorrow. And those who are interested, let's continue in this faith, the fast of Daniel, tomorrow, after tomorrow, and until on Sunday when we are going to have the end of the fast and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to those who are sincere. Those who are sincere, you can receive the Holy Spirit even though, even though you are in sin. But how so, Bishop? You only have to, there where you are, in, in your sin, wherever you are, whatever it is that you are doing, you say, my God, that's not what I want. Have mercy on me. Have compassion on me. And help me to know you. Give me a chance to live this life that I am in. And God will give you faith, the spirit of faith, so that you can then live this life, this situation, and serve Him for the rest of your life. There is a chance for you who are sincere. For you, there is still an opportunity. May God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow. And Sunday, don't forget, we are going to have the prayer with Bishop Adilson there from the Cenacle in Jerusalem, live this Sunday at 7 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and also at 6 p.m., at 6 p.m. on Sunday. But at 2.30 p.m., we have the meeting that is specifically designed for those who are suffering with depression, insomnia, fear, nervousness, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, those who have an emptiness in their soul. If you who are watching me now, you are of the faith, then go after these people. 
and bring them now this Sunday at 2.30 p.m. You can participate of the meeting at 7 a.m. or 9.30, but don't forget those who are groaning out there and go after them. Take them into your car. Bring them on your lap. Do something. Get a trolley, you know, a, a push car. Put the person in the push car and bring them to save that soul. Because one soul, it's worth more than the whole world and its glory. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.